Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel. And it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So what we're gonna be covering here today in this video is we're gonna be looking at statics, components, and resultants. And we are going to use the rectangular method to solve this problem. So we are tasked with determining the magnitude and the direction of the resultant between two forces shown on this bracket. We have 800 pounds which is 60 degrees off the horizontal, and then 500 pounds, which is 35 degrees off the horizontal. So in utilizing the rectangular method, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a free body diagram first. This free body diagram is gonna be really simplistic because we only have two forces and not a very difficult picture here. So when utilizing the free body diagram, we have to set up an X, Y coordinate system here. So there's my X and there's my Y. My origin point will be the center where all the forces collide, which is, well, right there. There's only two of them, so it's at the center of the bracket there. And then I'm going to apply my forces to my free body diagram. I have 800 pounds in this upright direction, 60 degrees off of the horizontal, which is the X. And then I have 500 pounds in the down right direction, which is 35 degrees off of the x-axis. And that's it for my free body diagram. As I said, very simplistic for this, for this particular problem. So what we are going to do next, we are going to start utilizing the rectangular method here. And in utilizing the rectangular method, what we have to do is that we have to sum forces in the y direction and then sum forces in the x direction. We just have to tally them up and see what we have and then that will work us towards the resultant. So what we're gonna do is we are going to look at each force and we are going to pull out their X and Y directional forces. So what I'm going to do first, and this may seem a little drawn out here, but what you do is that you're going to look at each force individually. So with my first one, I have the 800 pounds, which is up and to the right, looking like this. Well, which way is its individual X and Y components going? Because we're going to break this thing up into an X and Y. Well, since this 800 is going up and to the right, the Y component and the X component have to be going up and to the right. So the components of the force have to match the general direction that 800 pounds is going. Since it's going up and to the right, we have to going up and to the right. So I'm just gonna call this one Fy for right now and this one Fx. And let's find out which each of those are. So, oh, forgot my angle here of 60 degrees. So my Fx is going to be the force of 800 pounds. And then we are either going to use cosine or sine of this angle to turn it into that component. Well, which one do we use? Well, since the angle is off of the X axis, cosine will be associated with the x here because the angle is adjacent to the x. So we will have cosine of 60 because the angle is touching the x. So cosine will go with the x. The Fy will be 800, once again, the force. And this time it will be sine of 60 degrees because the y is opposite that 60 degree angle is not touching it. So anytime that happens, you're going to use sine because sine is for opposite. All right, so let's just go ahead and fill these out. So 800 cosines of 60 gives me exactly 400 pounds acting to the right. And then 800 sines of 60 gives me 692.8 pounds in the upward direction. All right, so there's my first one of my 800. And then we're gonna repeat that process for the 500. So just redraw a little X, Y coordinate system here. And then the 500 is going down and to the right. And it is off the X of 35 degrees. So which way are the X and Y components for the 500 going? Well, since the 500 is going down and to the right, the components have to be matching that. So the Y will have to be going down and the X will have to be going to the right. 
So let's figure out our X and Y here for the 500. Well, the FX will be 500 pounds. And once again, we are going to use cosine of the angle because the angle is off of our X axis. It is adjacent to it. And then the FY will be 500 pounds. And this time it will be sine of that angle of 35 degrees because the angle is opposite the Y. It is not touching the Y. So 500 cosines of 35 pops out to be 409.6 pounds acting to the right. And then 500 times the sine of 35 gives me 286.8 pounds in the downward direction. So now I have my components for each one. So as I said earlier, we are going to sum them together in each direction to find out what we have. So. Let's do that. Uh, let's just draw a little squiggly line to separate this right here. So we have our summation of our x direction. And we are going to take everything acting to the right as positive, everything acting to the left as a negative number in this summation equation. So let's tally up our x forces. Well, we only have two of them. So we have 400 acting to the right. So that is a plus 400 pounds. And then we have for the 500, we have 409.6 acting to the right. So that is another positive number. And the total of 400 with 409 gives me 809.6 pounds acting to the right. Okay, we'll just repeat that process for the Y. We'll take up as positive in the Y direction. Everything downward will be considered a negative number. So over here, our first one is 692.8. It is up, so it'll be a positive 692.8 pounds. And then for our second force, we have 286.8 in the downward direction. So that will be minus 286.8 pounds. So tally those two together and we end up with 406 pounds. It is positive, so that means it is going in the upward direction. So what I've done is I've taken my two forces, the original forces of 800 and 500, broken them up into each components for, or the X and Y components for each force, tallied up all my X and Y forces, and this is what I am left with. I am left with this. So let me just redraw the XY coordinate system real quick. It'll make more sense. So what I have here is I have my, Fx, which is 809.6 pounds to the right. And then I have an Fy, which is 406 pounds in the upper direction. My resultant will be between these two because this is to the right, this is upward. So my resultant has to be up and to the right. Well, how do you solve this resultant? Well, look at what this forms here. If I have my Fx, at 809.6, I have my Fy going upward at 406 pounds. My resultant is going to complete the triangle and be the hypotenuse side for this right triangle here. And it's a right triangle since the X and Y will meet at a right angle. So this is what I'm looking for for my magnitude. The angle off of the X axis, we'll just call alpha. And that will be the angle from the FX force. So I end up forming a right triangle. And this is why sometimes this, this method is called the right triangle rule or the triangular method, because it forms a right triangle, because your FX and your FY um, components will always be at a 90 degree angle. So how do we solve for R? Well, since it is a right triangle formed here, we can just use Pythagorean theorem. R will always be this. It will always be the square root of the summation of your Fy components squared plus the summation of your Fx components squared. Well, just fill in here. The summation of my Fy components was 406 pounds squared plus the summation of my Xx, Fx component forces, which is 809.6 squared. Add those together square root them, 
And we end up with a resultant value of 905.7 pounds in that general upright direction. So that is the magnitude of my resultant force here at 905.7 pounds. Last thing I need is my angle here. Well, my angle will just be the tangent of that angle will be equal to the summation of my Fy over my Fx if I want the angle from the x direction. So I can just rearrange this and take the tangent inverse of that right side, filling in the numbers here. Our Fy was 406. Our Fx is 809.6. And that gives me an angle off of the X of about 26.6 degrees. Okay, so typically for these types of problems, it's best to just redraw a little simple free body diagram and show your resultant force on it. So there's my X, there's my Y, there was my origin point. My resultant is going up and to the right and it has a magnitude of 905.7 pounds and it is off the horizontal X axis at 26.6 degrees. And that is what would be considered your final answer. And that's how you use the rectangular method or rectangular rule to solve components and resultants, finding the component or finding the results and forces or results and force between multiple components. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.